And you're going now to Limerick. And this is quite a significant role in that it's one of the first amalgamations that's going to take place between yes. the city and county. Tell us a bit about that. It is. It's, 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 it's a rare opportunity in local government because you're going into shape an organisation. And we normally have to inherit the structures that you have. So there's an opportunity here to restructure. Um, identify what are the critical areas that local government should now be in in terms of providing, as you, as you refer to, the leadership and the direction. Um, it is merging two cultures uh, of two organisations that have operated separately for quite some time. And overall, it's going to provide and tick the boxes of uh, economies, uh, cost effectiveness, and hopefully improve service over time. Now, Limerick City obviously has its own challenges. It's going to be a difficult role in some ways. It is Limerick. I, I mean, I I had a very I very good fond memories of Limerick City, working there for for six years, primarily in the housing and, and and economic areas. So I'm, I suppose, going back with my eyes wide open in terms of the realities that I knew to exist and currently do exist. But Limerick is a fine city, um, and it's got to be thought of in the context of what it is in terms of its larger hundred thousand population, not the traditional approach of a borough. And when you see what it has to offer. I think the challenges which currently are there, which are being addressed and will take some time to address, but they will be addressed. I think um, you probably well know um, the Local Heroes Project here in Drogheda has been giving a lot of support and a lot of leadership to the Limerick Local Heroes Project as they've got underway. And I think the spirit of the people in Limerick uh, to fight back has been just incredible. There's a great buzz from those kind of people, but then they are the engaged people who step forward to those sort of roles anyway. It's the other sort of aspects of society you really have to wrangle with as well, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think Limerick's any different to any other place. That There are people who feel either distant franchised or disengaged um, and how do you find that and, and how do you actually work with people like that. I think the Age Friendly Programme up here in this part of the country has been probably a good example of how you start to engage it with a different cohort of people. How do you bring them on board and how do you then actually implement what's been asked of you. Now that was very different. Uh, Limerick already has, as you quite rightly point out, a very significant local heroes programme ongoing, a very dynamic uh, business community who have been struggling for quite some time, but also a regeneration project which has commitments for the next three to four years and that's very important because expectations have been very high the time frames for delivery have probably been over um, estimated and you need to continue to keep people with you while trying to give the results that they expect but I think what really needs to be decided upon is the proper timelines for these results, not the overnight successes that people hope for and desire. Coming back to what you achieved in Louth, one of the things I know you were instrumental in setting up was the business support unit. And you said that um, we have a very high percentage of entrepreneurs. That's very interesting. And, you know, to generate that support and to keep that ball rolling, what needs to be done? Again, the business support unit was a recognition that we have so many different agencies operating on a regional basis that how do we actually channel their requirements through to local level, whether it be on a planning basis or any other aspect relative to it. So the business support unit, if you like, is is the, is the front face in that regard and responds then to any developer who wishes to actually come in here and create jobs and it makes it easy to connect. Now, what needs to continue is... One, we need to continue to involve the business community that's out there, um, whether it's it's the likes of Paul White, whether it's the likes of Gavin Duffy, whether it's the likes of Ray Carroll, people who have given of their time to help us with their expertise in areas that the county can take advantage of. Hopefully we can maintain that le- level of commitment because that's the real thing. When you bring a group together, the first couple of years are exciting, they're a learning curve. The next three years are hard work. That sort of frontline interfacing with the business community, was that unusual for a local authority at that time when you pushed that one out? It, it wasn't so far as it's not our remit. I mean, and, and, and we often And get yet you can up. show such leadership in that area if you choose to. If you choose, well, I, I think there's nothing beyond our, our gambit, I'm perfectly honest. It's a question of ensuring that we give due courtesy and respect to the, res- to the agencies who have that remit. So how can we provide support for them? In the current um, times that we're in, all of these organisations are stretched. They're in difficulty. So we provided a support for them by simply stepping up to the mark. Um, we were very lucky with, with the people in Enterprise Ireland, the people in IDA, the people in, 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 in SEAI, who actually were prepared to allow us fill that space. Now, if you get any form of resistance, obviously it doesn't work. But we didn't get it here. And as a result, we have a very strong model, which 
has shown dividends over the last couple of years. Yeah, it, it's the crucial position that the local authority is in, really, that a lot of good people can come together in a volunteer capacity to make something happen. Yes. But somebody has to be the central connection point. And if the local authority can step up and be that, it just makes everything happen so much more smoothly, doesn't it? Well, it does. I mean, again, you have, you have political support. I mean, at the end of the day, there is a local democracy operating here where you can actually go to a council and, and receive the mandate as an official, as an executive or as a manager. You know you can go out there and work very quickly with those, those communities. And you're resourced because you're dependent upon the elected body to provide those resources to actually deliver on that, which brings you around the whole cycle in terms of where is the money coming from, what are the issues that revolve around that. But they're all, they're, they're all intertwined. If, if the council don't actually provide the resource and the leadership, it doesn't enable people like me to make the contact with agencies out there that actually get the work done. But I think as well, you're being modest. I think it takes a county manager who will see the vision and who will put the time into it above and beyond the other call of duty. Well, well again, it's a question of how you see your position. I mean, as I say, I, I've always, I, I've never seen limits in the local authority business. Uh, we, we, we have a mandate uh, through the elected body to actually provide services for the community, support community or lead a community. And that's what we should be doing. On a personal side, Con, you were a, a mean uh, county footballer in your day, so I'm told. Oh, well, I, I played a lot of football in, in one of the best counties in the country, in Meath, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so although you were resident in Louth, your heart was in Meath, was it? Were you at the game on Sunday? I wasn't at the game Sunday, but my heart most certainly was there. And I don't think anyone would have any doubts where my heart has laid over the last five years in terms of football. Who did you play with in Navin? Navin O'Mahony's. Navin O'Mahony's, yeah. Navin O'Mahony's, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. successful time period with some great players. Yes, right. indeed, indeed. And do you still play a bit or what do you do to keep fit aside from uh, the, 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 the challenges of the, the day job? What do you do in your other life? Um, I try to keep a little bit fit for, through the jogging and so on, but I think the little five-year-old keeps me fitter than anybody. So that's, that's where my commitments are at the moment, at home. Indeed. And how has it been in terms of house hunting and moving the family and all of that? It's going to take time. It's going to take time. Um, nothing happens very quickly. And it's, it's for Anne, it's going home to West Limerick. And therefore, we'll pick and choose uh, appropriately in that regard. Indeed. So we'll take our time. And your little one is small enough, so there isn't school issues as yet as such. Well, we've had the first year of school at CBS Dundalk. Fabulous year. So please God, now we'll, we'll get a good place for him next year. Well, we wish you every success in your new role in uh, Limerick. Obviously, I was joking when I said, are they glad to see the back of you or you did something right? But it's clearly that you did, did something very right to get one of the, the top jobs in the, the local authority sphere. So we wish you every success. Conray, thank you very much for joining us today on LMFM. Thank you.